Hey, Fumzi Lechtray here, and welcome to our upgrading commander build video today, as we're going to be going over the Tier 9 British Battleship, or should I say Battle Cruiser, the Duncan. So I've already moved my commander off the ship, but I will put a, another commander on the ship to just illustrate to you the build I had in yesterday's video, and also the overall build I would recommend. So first we need to talk about what type of ship is the Duncan. Well, it is a battleship, but pretty much more or less a battle cruiser. Uh, in terms of her armor scheme, you only have a 25 millimeter bow and stern, and then you have 32 millimeter uh, armor belt uh, side protection. So very vulnerable in terms of a G spam. Um, also, you know, quite <laughs> long here in this section. Um, very long superstructure on the rear of the ship, at least. Um, and then also eating a lot of penetrations from uh, a lot of other, let's say, tier 8, tier 9, tier 10, and super battleships in the game. So you have to be mindful in terms of your positioning. Um, she's not a sniper battleship. Um, the Duncan plays best, in my opinion, at uh, mid-range. So let's say that 12 to 15 kilometer window, especially when you build for concealment, uh, I believe it, I, you get down to 12.1, which we'll double check that. I want to put a commander on. Um, so this ship has a lot of capability, um, but you just have to play it well because as a battle cruiser, you don't have as much uh, larger health pool, maybe in comparison to some other tier nine battleships. So uh, again, just looking at the armor, so we talked about that 25 millimeter, we talked about the 32 millimeter, but we want to look at that Citadel on the Duncan, which is an above water Citadel, 356 millimeter in the front, 305 in the back, so if you're actually targeting, let's say you're, uh, you want to shoot a Duncan, try to go for the back half of the ship um, because you're um, 51 meter, a millimeter less of armor compared to the front uh, where you see there's more protection here uh, where you're going to have um, you know, the armor magazines uh, beneath. So uh, weaker in the back. So basically kind of aim for the more of the smokestacks. And I mean, you have a pretty long... Um, target there per se. So that's kind of one of the things the ship doesn't do too well is in terms of her maneuverability. Um, has a very large turning circle radius and a pretty decent rudder shift time. Um, so play wise and you can get a lot out of this ship. So in terms of her modules, uh, these are 419 millimeter guns. With the build we have now, we have a 27.3 second reload time. 180 degree turn time is 34.5 seconds. The hull uh, starts off with hull A at 66,900. And then you can see when we go up to hull B, there's a buff also not only to the survivability, but also to the AA defense and maneuverability. So that's the first thing you're going to want to upgrade in terms of the modules uh, here on uh, the Duncan. Uh, so you go up to 75,200 hit points, and you can also see your AA rating uh, being 80. It's okay. You'll do decently against tier 8s, but tier 10s you will struggle against. Uh, and super CVs, ha 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 ha. Uh, torpedoes, you have two torpedoes, one on uh, the front right, one on the front left. They're 55 second reload time. These are 622 millimeter torpedoes that are essentially, I like to call them nu little nuclear warheads. They do 29,367 damage each uh, with 10 kilometer range and a decent, actually uh, good speed of 67 knots. Uh, so you can uh, definitely uh, yoink some ships with these, as you saw us do yesterday against the Johan DeWitt on the enemy team. Your gunfire control system stock starts at 17.9 kilometers, but you can upgrade that to 19.7. So this is the second upgrade you should go for um, uh, uh, of the modules after you get the hull B. And your propulsion is 160,000 horsepower, being 34 knots with the Sierra Mike flag. Otherwise, it's just 32 knots. And then you also have an engine boost of plus 8%. So we're going to go ahead and knock those things off for a minute. Let's talk about uh, the build uh, in terms of the upgrades here on the Duncan. So I have the main armaments modification one. This is improving the risk of your, or uh, reducing the risk of your main battery and your torpedo tubes becoming incapacitated by negative 20%. Your main battery and torpedo tube survivability goes up by plus 50%. And your main battery and torpedo tube repair time reduced by negative 20%. Um, there's not really any need for the auxiliary armaments. That's for, for the AA and secondaries. This is a secondary ship, and it's neither an, a tier 9 AA battleship. And then magazine modification. Um, 
reduces the risk of a ship's magazine detonating. But just take the Julia Charlie combat signal if you're playing ranked uh, random or clan battles. Um, as it completely eliminates the risk of your ship's magazine detonating. Now, in the second slot, um, I have damage control system modification 1, which reduces the risk of catching fire by negative 5%, risk of flooding, negative 3%. Um, otherwise, I would actually, if you have the coal, I would recommend going for the engine boost modification 1. This is going to extend your engine boost time. Um, you can see it's 17,000 coal, but with the coupon, 12,750 coal. Uh, what this does is it extends your consumable action time by plus 30 percent i don't intend to probably play duncan too much as a tier 9 battleship i quite like playing something more like the prince ruprecht or the iowa um, in my opinion um, but it's just something you really enjoy the duncan then i would say go for the engine boost modification one to extend uh, your engine boost right now it's a two minute uh, action time uh, but if you add this on i think that busts you up to roughly um two and a half minutes 150 seconds the slot three, I would recommend going for the aiming systems modification one, particularly because for the maximum main battery shell dispersion reduction of negative seven percent, this means that your maximum horizontal and maximum vertical dispersion are going to be reduced um, by several meters horizontally and vertically, which means you're getting tighter shell groupings. Um, so that, in my opinion, is quite good to have, especially for how devastating the HE and also the armor piercing is. Uh, with these 419 millimeter guns. Now, we have a 34.5 second, 180 degree turn time. So I don't feel too sensitive about the main battery modification too. Now, the commander that I would have on here, which we'll, we'll put one on here, but I had built into grease the gears. So we actually can have a, a, a reduction uh, on the um, main battery traverse speed. So we'll do that when I think I'll just throw on a 10 point commander and uh, we'll just uh, see how that affects things. So these are really the two best ones, but I would uh, suggest going for the accuracy uh, here with the aiming systems modification one. The fourth slot, I recommend the damage control system modification two. Uh, this reduces your fire extinguishing time by negative 15%, flooding recovery time, negative 15%. For example, without this um, upgrade, I would have died in yesterday's game because we came very close. If you watch it, 90 hit points remaining because uh, my damage control party was on cooldown and I had no more heals. Uh, so I do recommend picking up the damage control system modification too. Can definitely make a difference uh, in the game or the other two. Don't necessarily so much see the need for. And then for the fifth slot, building into the strength of this ship is her concealment. So right now we're 13.4 when we take the concealment system modification one, reduction of tactical range by um, sea and air, negative 10%, and dispersion of shells fired by enemies attacking our ship, uh, plus 5%. So this, uh, the British battleships and battle cruiser line that the Duncan is up to the St. Vincent is really about that concealment. So building into that is definitely a strong um, characteristic of the ship line. So definitely do that. And in terms of the uh, sixth slot, I recommend the main battery modification three, which is getting us down to that 27.3 second reload time. Now, granted, this gives us a nerf on our main battery traverse speed of negative 13%. Uh, so that's a bit unfortunate, but um, you know, as your adrenaline rush kicks in, you can be getting on beneath 27 seconds or 26 seconds, 25 seconds, and even almost 24 second reload time with these nine 419 millimeter guns. Uh, so I do recommend that. Your range is 19.7. And if you're playing the ship in beyond 19.7, like if you picked up the gunfire control system modification too, it'd be kind of questioning why are you playing that far away? Um, if you're seeking to play over 20 kilometers away from the enemy team, when this ship is really about that mid-range action of that 12 to 15 kilometer, and when things open up for you to push in because you have nuclear warhead torpedoes that reload in 55 seconds, um, you know, you can easily do so. So I do recommend going for the main battery modification three. Now, in terms of uh, the, her armament, um, without uh, the combat signals that increase our fire chance, it's a 47% fire chance right now. But we throw both of these two combat signals on, which I do run with the Duncan, um, Hawk, St. Vincent, uh, set to 49%. Uh, so almost a 50% chance of uh, starting a fire on enemy targets, which is nice when your targets are angled. Maybe they're too, uh, too much armor. Uh, so you can rely on uh, farming some um, fire damage uh, in-game. 
Um, they do a maximum damage of 6,150, uh, so that is good. The army piercing, don't sleep on the army piercing. Uh, maximum damage, 13,050. Um, these hit hard. I have Citadel cruisers, Citadel battleships, um, and so definitely take advantage of them um, because of just how good they are. Now, if you're dealing with a lightly armored uh, target, you know, it's still possible um, to, you're just going to get mostly maybe overpins um, with the armor piercing. So maybe you high explosive Citadel, something like a Neptune, Edinburgh, uh, Minotaur as an example. Uh, but do utilize the AP, especially when you have ships like in yesterday's game where they were kind of, the Iowa was showing us all broadside, so uh, we slapped him. Torpedoes, we did talk about. Um, these are really good. They have a rather large detectability range of 1.7 kilometers, uh, so they are rather easy to spot, but they at least have a 67 knot speed, um, and they reload in 55 seconds. Uh, so that's nice. So be you keep in mind that the arming time of these torpedoes is 0.6 kilometers, uh, so you can't fire these as close as you would for typical for most destroyers. So do be mindful to get that pre-launch, especially if you have a enemy ship uh, rushing at you. Your depth charge airstrikes, you get two available flights, maximum damage uh, for bomb uh, bomb damage, and you get two bombs in payload is 4,200. Um, 10 kilometer range, so it's uh, better than nothing, um, but it's uh, good to deal with subs. Now in terms of consumables, your damage control party. Uh, right now we have an action time of 15 seconds, cooldown time of 80 seconds, uh, so a uh, minute 20 seconds. And we can do a little bit to um, affect this with our commander, uh, which we can look at. With your specialized repair teams, you can heal back a lot of HP. So right now it's 1,504 HP per second, uh, action time of 20 seconds. If I take the India Delta combat signal, it jumps up to 1,804. So you really want to run that India Delta combat signal. And also you can pick up a fourth uh, repair party uh, with the commander. Uh, so definitely do take the India Delta combat signal because these heals are really powerful in bringing your ship uh, back to life from the dead. Engine boost we talked a little bit about already. If you are going to be um, playing the ship a lot, then I do recommend picking up the engine boost modification one. Uh, works really well with the ship. Um, and getting you around the map quite quickly. And you're stealthy enough, you could even possibly run something like Brisk um, and go even faster uh, if you so desire. Your defensive A fire uh, does do well against tier eight uh, carriers, um, even the hybrid uh, battleships like Nebraska. You can see an illustration of that in yesterday's game, which will be tagged at the end of this video where we had Nebraska fencing planes in, but we just use our defensive AA because we didn't want him to get any bombs off and we completely aligned it a lot ah, <laughs> annihilated, English is hard as I learned the region, annihilated um, all of his planes. So that was quite fun, but they're not that um, healthy to begin with. But you will probably struggle more against the tier 10 uh, CVs in the game as well as super CVs. Um, action time, 40 seconds, cooldown time of 80 seconds. Now in terms of the combat signals that I like to run on Duncan, uh, I do something uh, of this nature utilizing her speed, uh, the ram, uh, reducing the flooding recovery time, and fire extinguishing time. So again, reducing your fires, uh, being a battleship is very helpful, um, and just building into that saved us in yesterday's game. So let's go ahead and let's just throw a commander on. Um, I don't know if I want to actually throw a 10 point commander on. I might just throw um, a lower point commander on. Uh, we can still see how uh, things uh, are affected here. Um, so the build that I had uh, with the Nelson Commander on yesterday's video, I'll just uh, show you here. Uh, this was the build that I was running. Um, so 16 uh, points. Uh, so I have a 14 point build. I think I said 18 point in yesterday's video, but it's 16 point commander uh, able to utilize uh, the uh, 14 of the 16 points so far. Um, so basically what we seek to do here is build into um, the survivability of the ship. Uh, so for example, um, let's just go ahead and start uh, with the first slot. The emergency repair specialist means you get your damage control party consumable cooldown time reduced by negative 3%. Also your repair party consumable cooldown time uh, is also reduced by negative 3%. Uh, so basically this just shaves off like a couple seconds. Uh, off both of these two items and so that's really helpful too um, especially with the specialized repair team because you can heal back so much health uh, so I do recommend uh, running that as your force point skill 
For 3 point commander, I'd recommend to grease the gears. So now you can see that 34.5 seconds, um, I believe it was, is reduced to 28.7 seconds. So to me, getting the main battery traverse speed beneath 30 seconds on a battleship uh, feels quite fine uh, by me. And so I do like to build into that, particularly with the commander when I take the six slot um, that has a slight nerf uh, to the main battery traverse speed. Um, so getting your guns faster on target, especially uh, one of the things I need to make uh, mention of is that this turret basically has to rotate that 270 degrees uh, whenever uh, you're changing uh, sides in firing. Uh, but it works quite nice when you're kiting because it's, or it's on target uh, first. So um, that is one of the nice things uh, about uh, the Duncan here, in my opinion. For a 6 point commander, I'd recommend taking Drill and Rush for reasons I discussed earlier. You know, as your 27.4 second reload time, you can get down to 26, 25, and even 24. If you're low enough, your torpedoes reload even faster too. Uh, so overall, I dislike Adrenaline Rush um, because you can just be sitting on, waiting to utilize your special repair team to bring your ship back, uh, you know, uh, depending on what, what type of damage you've taken, you can heal back uh, a lot of that damage. So you can kind of utilize Adrenaline Rush to your favor if you're not being focused and just waiting to use the heal. Uh, for the 10 points, um, this can go either way. You already do have decent concealment. You could build into fire prevention first, or you could build into concealment first. Um, probably what I would just recommend to go for would be something like, um, oof. it's really up to you. I, I'd say either way going first. I mean, if you already have a 14 point commander, you're going to put on Duncan. It's not that big of a deal. Um, but if you start off with the concealment, so you're going to see that drops down to 12.1 by CE, 9.4, um, by air and by depths. Um, so you're building into one of the strengths of the ship. Now, however the ship is so large, the fire prevention um, comes in handy because you are a rather long target um, and easy for you know HE from destroyers, cruisers, battleships to fire upon you. And fire prevention reduces the risk of your uh, ship catching fire by negative 10%, but also reduces the number of fires by a negative one on your ship. So without fire prevention, like right now, there'd be four fires set on our ship, uh, one on the bow, one on the stern, and two on the superstructure. Fire prevention, uh, instead of having two fires on your superstructure, you only have one fire on your superstructure, meaning you're taking less overall damage, and a lot of people are gonna be you know, more or less aiming for this area. Uh, making fire prevention uh, really nice to have, uh, in my opinion. So up to you, if you're only dealing with 10-point commander, which route you feel like you wanna go first. Um, but if you have 14-point commander, uh, definitely do this at the get-go. Now, one of the things I did mention as a con in yesterday's video is, you know, I, I used all my heals. I took almost 3.5 million potential damage, um, and I didn't have that fourth heal. That would have been really nice to have had. Um, and that's where the emergency repair expert comes in. So you get a action time of plus 10% on your damage control party, plus 10% on your um, repair party consumable. So if we just look at that real quick, um, 10% action time, so 20 uh, to 22 seconds, and then 80 to, oh, sorry, not 15, uh, 15 to 16.5 uh, seconds, I think is how that works. Uh, so you get you more use out of your damage control team and your repair party. Um, just being able to have uh, the emergency repair expert. Now over here on the basics of survivability, this is what I recommend uh, running uh, last uh, for your commander. This reduces the module restoration time by negative 15% and fire extinction time, negative 15% flooding recovery time, negative 15%. Um, this is a pretty standard overall battleship build that I feel very comfortable. You're a bit squishy in terms of your armor scheme on the Duncan, so being able to build into that, uh, the endurance and overall strength of the ship, um, I'm quite comfortable with this. Now, there may be um, some room to play, so for example, if I didn't want to take this build, if I was gonna um, suggest an alternate build, what might I say? I might say drop basics of survivability, pick up brisk, this is gonna add 10% to your ship speed uh, when you remain undetected and your concealment is 12.1, so this is kind of a, a no brainer per se. And then I would say, pick up the demolition expert, get that 1% uh, additional fire chance uh, on your HE shell. So now you're at a straight 50%. Um, 
This is what I would suggest as a second build if you are wanting to utilize Brisk. Um, I really like having Grease the Gears uh, here on uh, Duncan. I don't really feel comfortable with going without it. Um, you could if you wanted to, uh, then that would give you, um, you could run something like this. This could be a third route you can go. Let's say you, instead of taking aiming systems modification one, uh, you take the um, main battery modification one for the grease, uh, basically grease the gears and the third slot. So this could be another way that you go. Uh, and also one I would definitely recommend if you don't mind giving up some of that um, accuracy dispersion in terms of your maximum horizontal and maximum vertical dispersion. So uh, three builds uh, overall uh, that you could do. This is what I'm intending to go for now. You could give up the basic survivability and go for Brisk and Demolition Expert, or you could give up Grease the Gears and um, Demolition Expert and only pick up the Brisk um, and just kind of a trade off. So this might be my number two option. Um, this would be, okay, number one, this one. Uh, number two, this one. And then number three, as I do it again, this. Uh, did I do that right? Yeah, that'd be my number three. So I hope you found uh, this video uh, helpful overall in talking about the Duncan. Uh, I hope that it does uh, showcase a little bit to you for being more comfortable with this ship overall as it's quite nice. And I, re I personally really enjoy uh, playing my Duncan. It was a nice grinding experience. It does help at least having a 14 point commander. If you're not running a high point commander, then it's gonna be a little bit more frustrating, I would say, uh, overall in playing the Duncan. So if you liked today's video, give a thumbs up. If you did not, give a thumbs down. Uh, if you do enjoy, consider subscribing and supporting the channel. And we'll catch you next time. Take care.